Peter Borkowski here on the Cougar Sports Network bringing you this edition of Coaches Weekly. And this time for this edition of CUC Baseball Weekly, I'm joined by three players from the squad. We got catcher Brandon Mahler, infielder Jake Mahler, and then relief pitcher Anthony Polano. Boys, welcome to the show. How are we feeling today? Doing good. Pretty Pretty good. good. Thanks for having us. No problem. Well, I've been doing these with Coach Connor up until now, so I want to get your guys' point of view on just how the season has gone so far. You know, you're sitting 500 overall, 500 in conference play. You're coming off a tough sweep at MSOE who is a very talented team granted so just from your point of view from the locker room from the player side of thing just what are kind of the general vibes around the team right now as we're really starting to hit conference play yeah you know I think uh, we're really focused right now you know we have a really good stretch of games coming up we're playing six games in four days between Mary and Benedictine and Aurora I think right now the message is just to really be tough uh, during the games and just to get one percent better every day in practice mm -hmm. so. Um, going off of that, I think that um, everyone's starting to put it together within the mental side and uh, the ability to play. And uh, Coach Connor uh, had a really good quote for us the other day was that anywhere, anytime, any place. Um, basically meaning that we can beat anybody anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I live by that too. Um, if we can put it all together, I think that we are the most lethal team in D3 and I think we can match up with anyone very well. Mm -hmm. I think the big thing that we just got to remember is that we got like 20 games at least left in the season. Right. And, you know, like last year too, like we had a really tough stretch at the end of conference where we played like eight games in like six days and we were very successful. Like we can play six days, six games in four days. Like that's nothing for us. Like, we're confident, we're ready to go, and we're ready for the challenge. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I want to get a little bit more specific with each of you guys here. Brandon, we're going to start with you. Obviously, you had a great freshman year last year, all-conference player, all that good stuff. And something Coach Connor has talked about with you is being able to kind of live up to those expectations in your sophomore year. Not only do that, but get better as well as still a very young player. So what's kind of been the process for that of, hey, I had this great first year, but I still want to get better? Because you are still having a really good season up to now. So how are you continuing to prove even after that great start to your college career? I think if uh, to answer the question, I got to go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I did have a very successful year. Um, I had a lot of great people around me, and that helped me a lot to become the player I am now. But also, I think one of my big things that people don't um, know is that I had surgery over the summer, mm. and it held me out from the whole summer in the fall. So I think the biggest thing for me of like my growth mm -hmm. and like being patient, I know Coach Connor was talking about my mental side of the game. I think that actually was a positive for me mm. as much as it was a negative. Um, it helped me figure out how to be patient and uh, work with my pitchers. So, you know, that's one of the biggest facets of being a catcher mm -hmm. is being able to work with pitchers, know what they like, know what they don't like, certain counts. So I think um, also it's just working hard. Is It's like the cliche answer, but um, – just wanting to get better every day mm -hmm. and coming in here with the working hard with all my guys and um, just making a difference to the team. You know, it's not one guy on a team. It's a 40, whatever we have, 42. Right. So if one, one of those blocks is not stacked on top perfectly, then it's all going to fall down. Mm -hmm. So I think I believe that if everyone's bought into the right price, everybody's going to get better whether they think about it or not. Right. Well, and then as for you, Jake, you've been one of the best storylines for the team this year. Really, since you guys got back from Florida, you have been a integral part of this lineup day in and day out. You've had great games all through, again, since you got back from Florida. And what has gone into that for you? How were you able to, you know, you kind of got your chance. I think that North Park game was really the first one we saw you really start to pop off the stats sheet. So, I mean, what went into that process for you of, hey, I got my couple at-bats here. I'm starting to get more playing time. And you've turned yourself, again, into an integral part of this lineup? I think the, the biggest thing for me is just uh, trusting my approach at the plate and trusting the work that I put in. Uh, that's something I've talked a lot about with like, Coach Connor and Coach Nelson is just when I stick to my approach, that's when I've found out to be the most successful. And obviously when I shy away from it, then I kind of tend to get myself out. Mm -hmm. And also another thing is just uh, showing like a lot of confidence, like not just in the box, but like all over the field. Um, I kind of have like a mentality, or I've been trying to adopt a mentality that I'm better than the guy that's on the hill mm. and when you just like show something like that it's like it kind of is a little bit contagious and you know it's just had me feeling really good recently in the box. Mm -hmm. 
And then as for you, Plano, I mean, you're having a good season on your own, right? Sub three ERA, all that good stuff. But I, with you, I also want to talk about just this bullpen as a whole. I mean, you guys have been one of the best parts of the team. You've adopted that night shift mentality of, you know, clocking in, clocking out. So what has gone into making that one of the best parts of the team as a whole, the bullpen, either from your point of view with what you've been doing to have success on your own right and just what the unit as a whole is doing that has turned them into such a shutdown unit? Yeah. You know, for me, it's a confidence thing, and that's that's personal, but that's also the identity we've tried to embrace in the bullpen. I think we knew going into the year that we had a lot of depth from that side of the mound, and for me as a leader, I just really wanted to help the guys embrace that confident mindset. And I think, you know, a lot of guys have done a really good job of doing that um, as the years progressed. And I think for me, it's just been really kind of simplifying the process mm -hmm. of pitching. I think, you know, working with a lot of the other pitchers has really helped me. I think working with uh, Brandon and the other catchers has really uh, helped me. And, you know, I think it's been a really good start to the year for me so far, but there's a lot more work to do. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I think the bullpen's in a really good spot. And I think, you know, Coach Connor talks a lot about at this level of college baseball, once you get away from the starting pitcher and you get into the other team's bullpen, our hitters are in a really good spot. Mm -hmm. and I think uh, Brandon and Jake would attest to that. I think for us, it's, you know, if our starter has a successful outing, and once you get to our bullpen, it's kind of the inverse. I think our bullpen's done a really good job of throwing up consecutive zeros. Right. I think in the late game, we usually do a pretty good job of giving our offense the best chance to succeed. So I mm -hmm. think that's a really good identity to embrace, and I've been trying to get that message across to the other pitchers. I think we've done a really good job of sort of buying into that. Mm -hmm. Well, to wrap up here, and this is for all three of you guys now, you got a big weekend coming up. You got Marion here on Saturday, and then you traveled to Benny on Sunday to face a nationally ranked team, one of the best teams in the area, the whole country, of course. So something Coach Connor has been preaching on these coaches' weeklies is finding consistency. You guys are sitting at 500, but obviously if you want to push into that next tier, you know, you need to win a couple games in a row to get above that 500 mark. So how does that start this weekend with Marion on Saturday, with at Benny on Sunday? Just what's going to go into finding that consistency and hopefully picking up a couple wins in a row yeah you know it's hard or it's, e it's easy to look ahead mm -hmm. especially when you have this many games in this many days i think it's important for us not to skip steps it's important for us to go game by game inning by inning pitch by pitch the only way you put together a win streak is by winning small parts of each game mm -hmm. and i think a big message for from coach connor this year has been splitting every game up into thirds of three innings okay winning the first three innings winning the second three right innings, right winning the third three and then winning the game i think keeping it that simple for this group especially a young group of guys like this is extremely important and i think sort of doing that and keeping that message throughout all six games of this stretch is going to be um extremely important for us to, to put together a little run here i think there's not a team that i would rather have in this situation than this group of guys. I think we're extremely tough. We have a lot of grit, and I think that's going to show uh, during this run of games. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, Paul pretty much said it all. Yeah, just we got to just take it one game at a time, mm -hmm. one inning at a time, one pitch at a time. You know, um, and you got six games like this. Like you said, it's really easy to like go and be like, oh, we play a war on Tuesday or Wednesday. Mm -hmm. but we got to deal with Marion first, right? And, and especially in a conference like this where, like, now I think it's eight teams make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Like, every single game matters. Mm -hmm. So you just, we have to, afford, we can't afford to not take it one game at a time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Bottom guy. So uh, <laughs> I only got one thing, but um, I think that when guys realize that this is just a game and then you can have fun with it mm -hmm. and changing the narrative from pressure and having to win games and, like, having that little weight on your chest and just go to the back to like the nostalgic route of just like, Hey, I'm coming here to play baseball. Right. Like this is what's fun. Mm -hmm. I think that helps people. It helps me for sure. You know, not having thinking about pressure, but rather changing the narrative to, I want to go have fun. Mm -hmm. And I want to obviously winning is fun. Um, so that's, I think that's one of the big things is, and we we're used to playing multiple games in a row on back to back days. We did that last year with Saturday, Sunday, uh, double headers and, I mean, the new we have a lot of new guys, but I know they're they're tough guys, so right. they can they can you know cope to it. And also, we're in really bad weather, so you know you got to yeah. always be ready for for game changes. So I think if we just have fun 
and uh, play our game, we're gonna we're gonna do just fine in the next eight, eight games. Definitely. Well, CUC baseball back at it this is Saturday. They're taking on Marion University right here at CUC at 12 and 3 p.m. Coverage for both those games can be found at our website, cucougars.com, and the live stream can be found on our YouTube page, CUC Sports. Guys, thanks again for joining me today. Good luck against Marion on Saturday, Benedictine on Sunday, and the rest of the season as well. But until next time, this is Peter Borkowski sign off of the Cougar Sports Network and wanting to say, as always, go. Down through the ages, God has called and equipped people to make a real difference in the lives of others. To lead, to heal, to stand tall. For 160 years, Concordia University Chicago has been preparing the next generation of leaders with the wisdom, faith, and values to make an impact in the world. To share the gifts God gave them and answer the call to a life fulfilled by purpose and truth to be living examples of what it means to live with Christ at the center as we serve others.
Hello, I'm Dr. Russell Don, president of Concordia University Chicago. Thank you for tuning in to today's Cougar Athletics broadcast. We take great pride in the strength of both our athletic and academic programs, which are rooted in our steadfast commitment to Jesus Christ. Dedicated to the liberal arts as a foundation of a high quality college degree, we believe education should form individuals for service to their neighbors. This makes Concordia Chicago an exciting and fulfilling place to study, work, learn, and grow. Learn more today by visiting cuchicago.edu. Thank you, and go Cougars! Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cougar Sports Network. I'm Kayla McLeod, joined by the lovely, as always, Assistant Director of Athletic Communications, Sydney Pulaskis Law, her for another beautiful day of Cougar baseball. Ready to go here in the Thunderdome. It is a beautiful day, much better than we've had lately. It's been a rainy, cold couple of weeks here in the Chicagoland area, so really nice to have a nice, sunny 60 to 70 type of day here to get some doubleheader action between your Concordia University Chicago Cougars and the Aurora University Spartans. Absolutely. The Spartans coming here to River Forest as a nationally ranked team. The Spartans actually just jumped a spot in the rankings when the polls came out yesterday. So we're looking at a – actually, they jumped two spots. We're looking at the, the Spartans being ranked 13th in the country. So a very, very good team here. Cougars looking to defend their home field and uh, do the job today. We've got Dylan Scott on the mound for the Cougars. Scott coming into this year so far, 6.75 ERA as he fires that ball for ball one. One for was win loss percentage, excuse me, seven appearances, 21.1 innings pitched in a 20 strikeout to 16 walk ratio. So. We'll see what he can do against a very, very tough Aurora lineup as we're going to have Bermillo slash that one off in the left field. And Bermillo, 395 batting average, fourth highest on the team. So ready to get the, the Spartans started. We'll run through the Spartans lineup here. First, as we've seen at the plate so far, we've got Bermeo. Second, as that ball is hit high into the sky. We'll get back to the lineup here in just a second. Three Cougars coming over, but second baseman Jake Mahler is going to successfully glove that one in for out number one. But getting back to our lineup, 
as we've got at the plate now, number 26, Joe Lukansic. Batting third for the Spartans, Angelo. Fourth, Riley. Fifth in the lineup, Panico. Fifth in the lineup, Curseo. Sixth in the lineup, excuse me, seventh in the lineup, Patton. Eighth in the lineup, River Rivera. Ninth in the lineup, Rook. And pitching for the Spartans is Ruiz. So a solid, these guys have all been the top hitters for the Spartans, so we're not seeing much of a change in the lineup for this nationally ranked team. That one misses for a ball. We've got Lukancic up to bat right now. Top average for the Spartans, 466 average. He's played all 23 games with all 23 starts as he fouls that one off to, to count here with one out for the Cougars. But again, back to Lukancic. 41 hits on the year, nine doubles, 19 RBIs, a 568 slugging percentage. So really just a fire starter for the Spartans. We'll see what he can do here against Scott. As he connects with that one, and it's going to drop fair right up the left field line. He gets able to grab it and get the throw in, but that's going to be a stand-up double for Lukansic. Already making some damage here, and now we've got one out here for Scott and the Cougars, but now we got Lukansic on second, immediately putting him in scoring position Betty with... Third. Angelo coming up now. Angelo, 402 batting average. Again, another Spartan who has played and started in all their games this season. 33 hits, eight doubles, two home runs, and 23 RBIs. So another hot bat for the Spartans lineup. As that ball is in there for strike one. Interesting to note, the Spartans are on a six-game win streak right now. They've had some big, big wins taking down Concordia University on Saturday in a double header as Angelo swings through that one. Scott so far looks like he's really trying to pound the outside part of the zone. At least they're trying to keep the ball away from the inside hands of these Spartan hitters and really try and drive them towards right field. Not a whole lot of shift right now. I see Mahler is a little closer to second base maybe for the pickoff play, but right now looks like they're playing them pretty straight up. So we'll see what the game plan will be for the Cougars thus far. Scott gets the strikeout right there. A big time strikeout there for Dylan Scott to get the Cougars in a really good position here with two outs now. As third baseman Logan Riley comes up to the plate for the Spartans. Riley, 371 batting average, 33 hits on the year. As that one's in for strike one. He's also one that has four home runs on the season, 10 doubles and 32 RBIs. This Aurora lineup known for their extra base hits. So we'll see what he'll get here with the two outs. As he sends that one over, Mahler at second able to successfully glove it and get it over to Kasich and get the Cougars out of the inning. So a really good way to get out of that after giving up one hit, but the Cougars able to hold the Spartans to zero. So Cougars looking to get things going and have the opportunity to strike first. We'll get you the Cougar batting lineup in just a minute when we get back on the Cougar Sports Network. Our name's Richard. Hey Cougar fans, thank you for tuning in to today's game. For more information on the baseball program, head to cucougars.com. We, we hope, hope to see, see you in our, our next game. game.
back here on the Cougar Sports Network. Center fielder Eli Hickman gonna get things uh, started here for the Cougars. We've got Ruiz on the mound for the Spartans looking to hold off the Cougars here. Ruiz so far this season, 5-11 ERA, three win, win, loss record as he files that one in for strike one. He's got six appearances on the year with five starts, 24.2 innings pitch, and a 31 strikeout to 16 walk ratio. So a very good numbers for Ruiz today. As Hickman looks at strike two, Hickman making his first appearance in the number one spot for the Cougars, typically hitting towards the latter half of the lineup. As that one misses for a ball two. Hickman so far this year is hitting 400. He is the top hitter in the lineup for the Cougars with 22 hits, six doubles and 15 RBIs, really known for his stolen bases as well. He's got 10 stolen bases on 13 attempts so far. As that one misses for ball three. So a full count now for Hickman. Takes that one for ball four. Hands things off to the next guy. And when the next guy is Tyler Dorsch, it's a great person to hand things off to. Absolutely. Tyler Dorsch, 321 batting average so far. He's played and started in all 23 games this season for the Cougars. 25 hits, three doubles, a triple, and five home runs, 15 RBIs to his name. So, again, somebody who has some great numbers and not afraid to be very um, patient in the box. He's leading the team with 27 walks so far. So we'll look to see how him and Ruiz really – Tap out here so the Cougars look to score first in the top or the bottom of the first, excuse me. As that one hits for strike one, he connects and sends this one into right field. Lukansic under it, able to get it, holding Hickman at first. Bringing up Julio Cahigas for the Cougars. Cahigas, a 309 batting average, again, has started and played in all games this year for the Cougars. 29 hits, five doubles, two home runs, 16 RBIs, and a 426 slugging percentage. So this top of the lineup is really where the Cougars look to strike first. They look to get out early with their lineup. And again, having the speed of Hickman already on base is just a great way to get the Cougars going. Ruiz checking Hickman back over at first. Not a bad idea, Hickman, the leading stolen base guy for the Cougar squad. Not afraid to take off as that one is in there for strike one. Roy is br really bringing that ball in on the hands on Kahigas. Already looks like he's not afraid to pound the zone in certain spots and really go after these Cougar hitters. Hickman's gonna take off here. And it's gonna get under that. The pickoff attempt over at first and Hickman takes off and successfully is able to get under that tag. A rocket of a throw from Angelo over, but Hickman Nice and quick on the bases. That's a great look there from Hickman. I mean, he really took advantage of the fact that he thought that Ruiz was going to go for that pickoff play. And really being able to read that and already put himself in scoring position, that's a huge momentum changer for the Cougars. He gets swinging through that one, but Hickman with that stolen base now 11 of 14 on the season. So something that we could probably expect to see out of Hickman for the rest of the day is continuing to be aggressive on the bases Ruiz is going to take a, a break there, but 0-2 count here. He's way ahead in the count on Kahigas, and Kahigas is going to have to foul off what he doesn't like until he gets the pitch that he wants. The delivery gets Kahigas swinging. Strike three brings up Brandon Mahler for the Cougars. Mahler, 347 batting average, just trailing his twin brother, second baseman Jake Mahler, as the third highest on the Very team. Important. He's got... 18 runs scored, 33 hits, seven doubles, two triples, and three home runs, 21 RBIs on the season. So, again, like we mentioned before, the top of this lineup is just deadly for the Cougars. And we've got two outs here. Hickman still at second, so an opportunity for the Cougars to strike first. That one is in there for strike one. Mahler 
Waller connects with that, sends it foul. And quickly facing an 0-2 count now. It's clear so far for the Spartans and Ruiz out on the on the mound today, but they're really just going to go after these Cougars one by one. They are not shying away from the zone in any way, shape, or form. They're really just trying to get ahead as quickly as possible and get the Cougar hitters, who are known for being fairly strong up at the plate, to get them swinging at maybe pitches they normally wouldn't do to make sure that they're not striking out. Ball misses upstairs for ball one. Great take from Mahler there. Now we're at a one-two count, two outs here. Hickman still on second. As Ruiz gets ready for the delivery. Mahler connects with that one, sends it over. Bermeo able to glove it and get the throw in time to close the inning with no damage done. Looking at a 0-0 score here as we head into the top of the second. Don't go anywhere here on the Cougar Sports Network. Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, top of the second, still 0-0 here at the Thunderdome at the plate for the Spartans, senior Nick Panico, as he connects with that one right away and sends it into left field. Wasted no time there. Didn't get a chance to talk about Panico very much after he swung at the first pitch he saw, but he has a 413 average and second highest on the team, so known for be being ready to go and ready to swing, and he proved it right there. Absolutely. Center fielder, number 20, As Dominic center Curcio. fielder Dominic Curcio at the plate now for the Spartans. Curcio so far this year, 303 batting average. He's got 17 run scores, 27 hits, six doubles, two triples, and 10 RBIs to his name, as that one was in for strike one. He connects with that one, sends it foul. Looks like on these lefty hitters so far, it looks like we're not they're not really changing the zone that they're going for. Outside for righties, inside for lefties, as they're pounding the inside zone here. That's what's getting uh, Curcio here to foul off down the first base line. So we'll see if that's what's going to continue out of uh, Scott and Mahler out there on the mound. Scott checks Panico back at first base. Panico, not a typical threat on the bases. One for one for stolen bases so far this season, but Cougars looking to hold him to that as that one misses well away for ball one. Scott going for a pitch like that, just trying to change the eye level here for, for Curcio and not give him the same look every single time, especially for a hot team like Aurora like right now where they're, where they're sitting pretty in the national standings. You're really not wanting to give them too, too anything too much plate 
you really want to try and get them to swing at pitches that they're not good at and that they're not usually going to go after. So a 2-2 count now for Curcio. Because that one is in there for strike three. Caught the corner of the play. Curcio not happy about that call. But Scott picks up the first out here in the top of the second. That'll bring up the catcher, the catcher Tyler Patton. Patton, 143 average this season. He's got 11 runs and 11 hits to his name. Four doubles, a triple, and a home run so far. Nine RBIs as that one's in there for strike one to begin with. So as we're getting to the end of this lineup here, it tends to be a little bit more speed, just trying to get some runners on base here to roll over to the top of the order for the Spartans. As he swings through that one and quickly an 0-2 count now for Patton. Spartans jump started this inning with a first pitch swing and hit from Panico and Struggling to connect here since as Scott delivers this one, fouled back, keeping himself alive here, still facing the 0-2 count. Way ahead here in the count. We've still got runner on first, but nobody really threatening right now in the scoring position. So Cougars, again, still trying to see who can strike first, and they're wanting to get out of this inning and get a chance to get back to the plate to hit. Scott checking Panico back over at first as he gets set to deliver this one. Misses outside for ball one. Great spot though there from Scott. I mean, that's pretty much a textbook chase pitch uh, spot that you're gonna have. Just another another ball outside of the, in the outside batter box's line. Not necessarily in the river, but really just trying to draw those hitters out and try to get another swing. Patton keeping himself alive here again, fouls that one straight back. So a one, two count now. One out runner on first. As Scott gets set here. Swing and a miss, strike three. That is just some incredible work from Scott to be able to go upstairs on that pitch and get Patton, who was being very, very particular in the box in that and just winning it out by being able to pick the right spot and get him to swing on that last one. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for the freshman pitcher for the Cougars brings up Sean Rivera for the Spartans looking to keep things alive as that one is in there for strike one. And Mahler looks to catch Panico over at first. Sean Rivera so far this season, 344 average, 22 hits, four doubles, a triple and two home runs. He's got 19 RBIs as well. So again, really just trying to get the, the Spartans going here as that one's in the dirt, but nobody's gonna move. Mahler with some good movement behind the plate to keep that ball in front. Great work from Mahler behind the plate, acting as a brick wall, because if that ball gets past him, Panico is going to take that base to second. And the last thing that you want to do in this situation is have a runner in scoring position when you've already been so dominant in this inning. As that ball is hit deep out into right center, but Hickman able to successfully get underneath it and close the inning with no damage done. So a leadoff hit for the Spartans, but unable to do anything since. Still looking at a 0-0 ball game as we head into the bottom of the second. Stay tuned here on the Cougar Sports Network.
back here on the Cougar Sports Network. Bottom of the second, still 0-0 here. Cougars have a chance to strike first. Leading things off in this inning, third baseman, Tyler Crater. Crater so far this year, 264 average. He's got 17 runs, 24 hits, five doubles, and four home runs. As he pops that one high into left field, Rivera tracking it back and able to get underneath it for out number one. It's going to bring up Michael Kasich for the Cougars. Quickly moving on to Kasich, but Kasich so far this year, 213 average. He's got 15 runs, 20 hits, seven doubles, and also four home runs. Those two hitters just tra trailing Tyler Dorsch in the home run category, and again, 28 RBIs. Kasich is actually leading the team in RBIs so far this season as that ball's in there for strike one. Last weekday home game the Cougars had at the Thunderdome, Kasich had a fairy tale walk off in the game one winner as he fouls that one back, facing an 0-2 count now. Breeze again, going for the same exact type of uh, approach here against these Cougar hitters, just immediately going after them in the zone and not really letting them kind of take a breath at all. As Kasich connects and drops that one into left field, no, a fantastic athletic play from Rivera, able to get that one in time for out number two. Oh my goodness, what an athletic play. That was some great reads over there by Rivera out in left field. I mean, to be able to see that ball as it's dipping down into the left corner, especially diving on the line like that can be very dangerous, but he read it and he took the chance and it really paid off. So now batting here for the Cougars, trying to keep this inning alive is the second baseman, Jake Mahler. Mentioned him earlier, his twin brother is the catcher, Brandon Mahler. But Jake so far this year, 372 average, 12 runs, 16 hits as he fouls that one back to bring us to an 0-2 count. He's also got four doubles, a triple, a home run, and 11 RBIs so far this year. So second highest batting average on the team so far this year for the Cougars. If you're Jake Mahler here, you, the last thing you're looking to do is send this ball out to left field. So... He'll send that one to center field instead. Share the love, Curcio, able to glove it and quickly a three up, three down inning. Puts the Spartans back behind the bats. So we'll take a quick break here, but don't go anywhere on the Cougar Sports Network. Back here for the top of the third, still 0-0 zero, zero here. Spencer Rook at the plate for the Spartans. Rook number nine hitter for the Spartans so far this year. 295 average, seven runs, 13 hits, a double, and four RBIs to his name as he takes ball two into this count. Rook, not someone who has seen a whole lot of time out on the field compared to the other eight hitters in the lineup, but he has played in 16 games with 12 starts. So getting the start today against the Cougars, that he immediately gets ahead in this count 3-0. Yeah, you mentioned it, Rook. Not 
not necessarily as experienced this season as some of the others in the starting lineup against CU Dub. Their last game was 0 for 4 at the plate, but takes his quick walk to first here. And that's going to bring up the top of the lineup for the Spartans. For Bermeo, last time up po popped up to Jake Mahler over at second base, kind of in the the Bermuda Triangle zone back there behind first base, kind of the danger zone, but Mahler was able to track it down. So Bermeo, now his second time seeing Scott. We'll see what he's going to be able to do here. And again, Spartans starting off very well by getting a leadoff walk in the bottom of their order. This one is in there for ball one. Something to note from Scott here going into the top of the third. This seems to be either losing a little bit of his control or a different look here from the pitching staff on what they're trying to do to attack these Spartan hitters. He's kind of going around the outside parts of the zone a little bit more. So we'll see if that consistently sends the be it or if he just needs to settle in here a little bit in the top of the third. As this one misses for ball two, Mahler again trying to catch Rook over at first, but the throw a little bit off. Something that we've seen out of Brandon Mahler behind the plate a handful of times this season. He's consistently looking for those large jumps from those base runners, and he's successfully done it a handful of times. And great work from first baseman Michael Kasich to be ready for those throws at all times. Something to note as well as that one's in there for strike two. When Mahler's taking those pickoff attempts, he doesn't have the time to frame the pitches as much, so it's a little bit harder to get that call on those borderline pitches. So now we're at a 2-2 count, which Mahler, of course, has to continue to keep his eye over on Roosh over at first, but sometimes it can be a bit of a detriment when he doesn't have the time to frame those pitches. Scott checking Rook back at first, trying to contain the base runner. So 2-2 two, two count now. Scott checking on him once again. Rook, not typically a stolen base kind of guy over there. So far, 0 for 0 on the season. So not, not too much of a threat that we've seen so far. But again, you can never really underestimate the power of a nationally ranked team as Scott checks him for the third consecutive time. I'm going to be honest. I think that's the first time this year I've seen us check somebody three times over at first base. So... Scott really just making sure that Rook knows that he can't go anywhere. Part of those mind games to control the game. Scott did a really good job in the last inning at controlling the field from the mound. And I think he's just trying to make sure that he's still controlling things here. Still looking at a 2-2 count here for Bermeo. This one is high for a ball three. So a full count now. See Mahler pointing out at Scott just for a second there. So I think it's just a little bit of a miscommunication on where that pitch needed to be. So wanting to stay as borderline as possible, but not wanting to give the Spartans anything too fat over the white of the plate, because that's the second that they're going to be able to really make some damage. Swing and a miss, strike three. Catches Bermeo swinging and gets out number one of the inning. And that's gonna put <coughs> Joe Lukancic at the plate. Lukancic, his first at bat, he picked up a double to left field, down the left field line. So again, now in this position, he's got Rook over at first. So if he's gonna continue to spray balls to the op opposite end of the field, we'll see if that continues to be what he brings here as Scott is really starting to feel himself out on the mound. That ball connected and finds the gap. Rook was already taking off on the pitch. So a great job there to get bases, to get the bases moving. And quickly we've got a runner in scoring position. I mean, we kind of just said it. We can't say we already were talking about how he's really just been going opposite field Rook the entire time. And he perfectly Garrett places that ball between Crater and Boswell over there in the five, six hole. So some great work out of him. And now we got Angelo coming up to bat with runners on first and second with only one out for the Spartans. 
Scott sends this one in there for strike one. Angelo, his first time up, had a strikeout. So, again, Scott has already really gone in to see where these Spartan hitters are going to lack. But these Spartan hitters are now seeing Scott for the second time through the lineup. So we'll see if Scott can continue to take advantage of those mistakes from the Spartans or if the Spartans are going to start to figure out Scott. In Aurora's last game against CU Dub, Angelo was four for four at the plate. So had himself a really, really good game. And so far today, he's sitting at 0-1 and, and now quickly facing a 1-2 count. That was a great spot there from Scott as well as he's now ahead in this count with only one out, but still an opportunity for the Cougars to either turn a double play or maybe take the lead runner out. As he connects with that, Crater over to Mahler at second. Mahler bobbles it a little bit, can't get it out of his glove. That almost got called. That was almost, we almost called that, but a little bit of a bobble over there from Mahler at second, but still getting the runner in between. So now the Rook is over at third. We got Angelo at first base on the fielder's choice, and that's going to bring up Riley up to the plate. So two outs now, a runner 90 feet from the plate. Spartans in a really good spot to take the lead here. Cougars doing what they need to do to defend as Scott sends this first one in for strike one. Riley, his last time up, grounded out to Mahler over at second base. So we'll see what he does this time up again. He's got a runner in scoring position in the Spartans, not wanting to leave another goose egg up there for the third inning in a row. Both these teams just looking to see who's going to score first in this first doubleheader game because that's going to take a lot of the momentum throughout the rest of the afternoon. As that one in there for strike two, an 0-2 count now, two swinging strikes against Riley. Scott trying to get out of this inning, Scott free. Good one, that's a good one. Thank you, thank you. As he delivers this one, fouls back. Angelo went on the pitch. Again, this is still a first and third situation. I mean, with two outs, I mean, you're definitely not going to want to risk Mahler just going for the straight through throw to second base to get Angelo on the run. But at the same time, they have an opportunity here that if Mahler makes a mistake behind the plate, they're still able to take that base, and then they have two runners in scoring position rather than just one. So an 0-2 count now. The Pitch in there for strike three. Fire me up. Dylan Scott gets out of the inning, leaving two runners on base. A fantastic way to close out the inning. Still looking at a scoreless game here in River Forest. Don't go anywhere on the Cougar Sports Network.
back here on the Cougar Sports Network. Caleb Anderson at the plate for CUC. Anderson's first at bat here this afternoon. He's got a 295 average, six runs, 13 hits, and a double to his name so far. Usually the re regular designated hitter in the lineup for the Cougars. One two count here for Anderson as Ruiz is still out on the mound for the Spartans. Gonna go up in the top of the zone there, try and get a chase pitch, but Anderson is not gonna bite. And we're gonna see if the Cougars here are gonna strike first. We've had a little bit of action here so far in these first three innings of game one of our double header, but neither team has been able to really get across the plate yet. So a full count now. Anderson looking to make his way on base for the first time today. As Ruiz delivers, that one hits straight back up, catches Ruiz on the ankle. Nobody covering first, so Anderson is able to successfully get on base. A hard hit ball right back at Ruiz, not something that you really want to see. That's a hard job, too, out there for Ruiz and for Rook over at second base. I mean, as soon as that ball's hit off of him, it's got a weird spin on it. There's not really a whole lot you can do other than if uh, Angelo would abandon first base. But, again, you're still probably not going to get the out on that pitch unless you make a really, really good play. So really good hit from Anderson. And hopefully looks like Ruiz is doing okay, but uh, definitely a hard play for them to make. So one runner on base now for the Cougars. The shortstop, Yashawn Boswell, at the plate now, looks at strike one. Boswell, so far this season, 299 average, 13 run scores, 20 hits, three doubles, and eight RBIs. He's really known for his speed as well. He's got five stolen bases on seven attempts so far this season. So we're going to have a time call by the umpire. Looks like it might have been Ruiz was going a little too fast here. Wanted to get Boswell enough time to get into the box. Boswell drops for the bunt. Ruiz able to get the throw over and successfully gets the out at second. Bermeo did a really good job. That, that throw from Ruiz kind of went a little crazy, and he did a great job of keeping his foot on the bag as Anderson slid to the base and kind of flipped him over. Nothing you can do there, Bermeo or Anderson. It's just a game of collision that kind of happens in those situations but again Bermeo doing a great job of keeping his foot on the bag and now the the Spartans keeping the Cougars from getting a runner in scoring position back to the top of the order for the Cougars Eli Hickman at the plate as Ruiz checks on Boswell Pickman walked in his first at-bat, made it all the way to second base before being stranded out there. So, again, it would be great to have Boswell and Hickman out on the bases for the Cougars, both some of the fastest runners on in this lineup. So, again, having them leading the pack a little bit before our heavy hitters come up here in the top of the order, that's really what you want to see right now. As that one is chopped foul. So an 0-1 count here. That one's going to be in there for strike two. So Ruiz now ahead 0-2 with one out. Hickman can be very patient up at the box, veteran on this team, as he lets that one go to the out other batter's box for ball one. Boswell over on first, a aggressive base runner for the Cougar squad, five of seven for stolen bases this season. As Hickman connects with that one, sends it over to Rook. Rook is able to turn the double play. A fantastic double play from Rook, Bermeo, and Angelo to close the Spartans in the inning and keep the Cougars at bay. So still looking at an 0-0 game as we head to the top of the fourth. Don't go anywhere here on the Cougar Sports Network.
Sugar Nation, it's your favorite set of twins, Brandon and Jake. We're coming at you with a commercial. We love the support you give us on and off the field. To donate to our athletic communications department, hit the thank you button. This helps us continue to have the best live streams possible for some great Cougar baseball moments. Thank you and enjoy the game. Roll Cougs! Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, Panico at the plate for the Spartans. As he swings at the first pitch once again, but that's going to be right back to Scott to get the first out of the inning. Panico, a big fan of the first pitches. Yeah, I mean, last at bat, he had a, a single out to left field, but this time grounds that one out to Scott, and now we're going to have Number 20 come up to bat here, Dominic Curcio. He's 0 for 1 so far today, and he struck out looking. So, again, as the Spartans come through, now into the fourth inning of Scott pitching. And, again, Ruiz for the Spartans in the same position. This is really becoming a pitcher's duel between the two of them. So, we'll see how far both of these pitchers can go with the command that they're giving on both of these offenses. That one in the dirt for ball two. Scott been doing a really fantastic job for the Cougars in the first three innings of work, but interesting to note, we're finally seeing some movement down in the Cougar bullpen. Can't quite tell who's warming up over there, but Scott still doing his job as that ball is grounded out to Mahler at second and quickly two away. These last couple of half innings have been super quick on both sides of the ball. I mean, again, the defensive aspect of today's first game in this doubleheader has just been incredible. We've had some great plays on both sides and some great pitching um, appearances as well so far. So again, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen. Maybe when Scott has a reliever come in or Ruiz in that situation or how long they're going to have both of these pitchers stay on the mound. So Patton at the plate for the Spartans looks at ball one. Just a reminder to all of our Cougar fans out there that this is game one of today's doubleheader, a seven-inning game. All conference matchups this season that are doubleheaders will see a game one, seven-inning game, and game two, a nine-inning game. So as we are in the top of the fourth, we're already almost halfway through as that one is in there for strike two. One, two count now, Scott way ahead in this count, so he's gonna look to probably get a chase pitch right here out of Patton. In the dirt for ball two to even the count. Two's all around now for Scott and the Cougars. So we'll see if Patton can get a two out rally started here for Aurora and the Spartans. As that ball is hit deep into left, Kahiga is under it and gets the third out. Cougars get themselves out of the inning. And we are headed to the bottom of the fourth. Still scoreless here on the Cougars Sports Network.
back here on the Cougar Sports Network. Bottom of the fourth, Tyler Dorsch at the plate for the Cougars, still chasing the first run of the day. It's been an impressive job so far. We talked about it last, I think as Dorsch swings the first pitch he sees and lines it out in the left, so he's going to be out on that. But great hit from Dorsch, as I was just saying. This has been a pitcher's duel so far this afternoon, but – We'll t see how Ruiz and Scott for the Cougars continue to command the zone because at some point in time, both of these offenses are going to start to figure out these pitchers or these pitchers are going to reach their pitch count and have to have a reliever come in. Cahigas swings at the first pitch as well, but that's deep into left center. That ball is out of here. Home run, Julio Cahigas. Gets the Cougars on the board first with a solo shot to Division Street. This is exactly what the Cougars want to cook up for them. Being able to score first in the Thunderdome is exactly what they're looking for right now with this momentum. And the dugout is absolutely on fire right now for what they're seeing out of Cahigas. And the Cougars are taking the lead now 1-0. to zero. That was an absolute rocket shot out to left center. The wind actually blowing in. So not only was Cahigas battling Ruiz on the mound, but he was battling the wind as the umpire was holding Ruiz, but still sent that ball in. Ruiz kind of starting to quick pitch these Cougar hitters, and our, our home plate umpire here is just not putting up with it. Mahler connects with that one and sends it out to right for Lukansic to successfully glove. So quickly two outs. Tyler Crater at the plate for the Cougars. It seems right now, at least so far in the last two innings, it has just been pitch hit, pitch hit, pitch hit. There hasn't been a lot of waiting around. There's been just a lot of attacking out of both teams, which is making it super exciting. But it looks like for both sides of the ball, for both teams, this is just starting to become a, a quick, quick game. And now Cougars one run up on the Spartans here in the bottom of the fourth. Just before Cahigas hit that ball, I was going to make note of how many times we've seen swings on the first pitch and that it hasn't been overall fairly successful. We've only seen one person get a hit, and that was off of a first pitch, excuse me, and that was Panico. So Cahigas actually reading my mind and defying that as Crater sends that one over to Rook and gets the out. So the Spartans able to get out of the inning, but the Cougars do some damage first. So Cougars on top of the Spartans as we head into the top of the fifth. Don't go anywhere. We've got a great ball game here on the Cougar Sports Network. What's up, Cougar fans? Thanks for tuning in today's broadcast. For all things Cougar baseball, head to Twitter or Instagram, type in CUC Baseball, and you'll find our page. Or visit cucougars.com. Thanks again. Go, Go Cougs! Cougs. Back on the Cougar Sports Network, top of the fifth, a monster inning for the Cougars. Only one hit, and we saw it as a solo home run to put them on the board first. Rivera pops this one high. Boswell tracking it and able to successfully glove it. Again, we're seeing a lot of first pitch swings today. I think now the Spartans, I mean, 
a little bit out of frustration possibly, but also just trying maybe to get Scott's first good pitches here. They're really being aggressive at the plate. Now with the Cougars having a 1-0 lead, they're really going to look to get their offense going, and the best way to do that is by swinging at the best pitch that you're going to get. And most of the time, the best pitch you're going to see is the first pitch you see. So with that ball being strike one in there from Scott, and again, Scott continuing to work on the mound. We've mentioned it a couple times so far today. This pitcher's duel is really starting to rack up to what it needs to be. As that ball is popped shallow into center field, but Hickman making the dash in to get it, and two away now for the Cougars. I mean, for the defense and for Scott specifically to have that 1-0 lead, not a huge amount of comfort zone, but enough of a confidence factor to make sure that he can go out there and he knows he can keep working his stuff. If he makes a couple mistakes, it's not the end of the world, but they, they've got the lead now, so that momentum is huge. Top of the lineup for the Spartans here in Bermeo. 0 for 2 on the day so far as he takes a hack and misses at that one. Bermeo so far today, he popped up to second base and struck out. So not a whole lot out of, out of the leadoff batter here for the Cougars. So we'll see what they can continue to do with Scott. Again, this is now beginning the third time that these Spartan hitters have seen Scott. And we've seen what the Cougar hitters have done with Ruiz now seeing him more than once. So, but right now, Scott is really in his ele element. You can see the ball moving really, really well. So he's up one, two now with two outs in the top of the fifth. A one-two count now. Scott looking to get out of this inning as he delivers this one outside for ball two. Two's all around now as Scott looks down to get his pitch, and we'll see if Bermeo can get the two-out rally started for Aurora. That one is in there for strike three. Dylan Scott absolutely fired up to get out of that inning. The Cougars meeting him at the line. Cougars are finding their way to dominate here as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Spartans still looking for their first run of the day. Cougars with the absolute momentum. Don't go anywhere here on the Cougar Sports Network. Back here on the Cougar Sports Network. Cougars leading the Spartans 1-0. Michael Kasich at the plate looks at strike one. Kasich 0 for 1 today as he swings through that one and quickly looking at an 0-2 count now. Last plate appearance, Kasich popped a fly ball out to center field. Ruiz still working on the mound as Kasich sends that one back to center field. It is back. They're tracking it at the wall. And making a phenomenal grab was Curcio. Oh, my goodness. Jumping back at the wall. And he's able to successfully reel that one in for out number one. Second baseman, number five. So Kasich out for the second time today due to Curcio. Excuse me. Bringing up Jake Mahler to the plate. Mahler takes a hack at the first pitch, fouls it back. As that ball is hit into the infield. 
And Bermeo able to get the throw over in time. Spartans meaning business here in the bottom of the fifth. Bringing up Caleb Anderson. Two away now. Hitter number 25, Caleb Anderson. Ruiz still working on the mound, doing a great job of getting the Cougars to swing here. As that ball misses for ball one. Anderson looks at ball two. So an 0 2 count, uh, excuse me, a 2 0 count as he chops at that one. It's going foul, but Spartans chasing it out of play. A 2 1 count now. Caleb Anderson. In his last at bat, he had that hard hit ball right back at Ruiz. Was able to successfully get on base from it. As he takes another hack at that one, sends it foul. A 2 2 count now. Two outs. The Spartans really dialing in here, trying to hold the Cougars where they're at and not give up any more runs. As that one misses for ball three. Spartan dugout thought that one was a little bit closer on the plate, was looking for that strike three call, but Anderson now facing a full count, two outs. Ruiz with the delivery. Anderson takes ball four. And that's going to bring up Yashan Boswell. As we're going to see a pinch runner for Anderson, number 24, James Klopke Jr., making his way on first base for the Cougars. A move we've seen head coach Colin Connor make a handful of times this season. Klopke Jr., three for four for stolen bases. So in a situation like this, in the bottom of the fifth, you're just looking to have some aggressive base running. And that's exactly what Klopke is going to be doing here for the Cougar squad. As that one in there for strike one. Boswell one for one on the day so far. As he swings through that, an 0-2 count here, two outs. Has to make this an aggressive at bat to stay alive, and he does. He drops that one into the gap. Klopke's rounding second, safely makes it to third. A fantastic spot for Boswell to place that. Klopke, quick base running. And that's going to put Eli Hickman back at the plate. Center fielder, number so a runner now 90 feet from the plate. Two outs. And it looks like the Spartans are going to take a quick break to assess things here. So while they're doing that, let's take a look and see Ruiz's numbers so far in the game. So far, 4.2 innings pitched. Only given up four hits, one run, but only seen one strikeout. The Spartans have some movement down in the bullpen, but recently started, so we can expect that we're gonna we're gonna see a new pit pitcher potentially come in in the next inning. Maybe let Ruiz find his way out of this funk. Head coach for the Spartans, Adam Stevens, leaving the trust in his pitcher, who's done a pretty great job so far today, been aggressive and controlling things from the mound. As that one. Misses outside for ball one. Hickman connects with that, but a very athletic 
sliding catch from Bermeo. Gets the Spartans out of it. And the Cougars still leading as we head to the top of the six here in River Forest. Don't go anywhere on the Cougar Sports Network. Hey there, Cougar, Cougar fans. fans. We appreciate you turning in today's game. To stay up to date on all things CUC baseball, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CUC Baseball. We'll see you on campus soon. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hey, Mom. Back here on the Cougar Sports Network. Spartans trailing the Cougars 1-0. Needing to find some momentum here. The number two hitter, Joe Lukansic, now at the plate. Scott still working on the mound for the Cougars as that ball is high and away for ball one. Lukansic two for two at the plate today. As he looks at strike one. Lukansic picked up a double in his first appearance as he connects with that one and sends it deep into the outfield. Kahig is tracking it, unable to grab it. And that's gonna drop Lukansic picking up his second double of the day. A great spot to drop that ball. And quickly, the Spartans have a runner in scoring position. It's going to put up Derek Angelo at the plate for the Spartans. Angelo 0 for 2 today. As Scott checks on the runner. But the timing was pretty pretty on point there. The throw just a little bit high. If it had been a lower throw over to second baseman Mahler, there might have been a pretty solid chance at that. As Angelo lays a bunt down, Scott able to corral it. So a nice sack bunt there to move Lukansic over into scoring position here as Riley now at the plate. Third baseman number 12, Logan Riley. So one out now. Lukansic over on a third. As that one is fouled back. Looking to force any balls on the ground there as that ball is hit hard over to Mahler. It's going to take a bounce off of the diving second baseman, and the Spartans are going to score. So an even ball game now. That's going to bring up Panico at the plate. 
Panico has been a force for the Spartan squad. He was named to the Northern Athletic Collegiate Conference Baseball Athlete of the Week, as well as picking up some national nods recognized at by D3Baseball.com on the team of the week and honorable mention for the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association Division Three hitter of the week. So a really force to be reckoned with. Mahler able to glove it over, gets it to Boswell. Boswell with a throw, gets it in time, turns the double play. That's how you get out of the inning. So the Spartans put up one run and we are all tied up as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Don't go anywhere, we've got an exciting matchup here. As we head to the bottom of the sixth here on the Cougar Sports Network. Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, a new arm on the mound for the Spartans. Number 11, Sam Harvey, the left-handed pitcher out of Bolingbrook, Illinois. Before we get too into things, we'll look at the final numbers for Ruiz. Five innings pitched, one run allowed on three hits, two walks, one strikeout, gave up one home run, 57 total pitches. But the game is all tied up here as the Cougars look to capitalize on this and regain the lead once again. Tyler Dorsch kicking off this inning for CUC. Harvey sends that one in there for strike one. Cougars now having to adjust a little bit to the pitching. Harvey, a left-handed sidearm thrower, so quite different from what we were the Cougars were seeing with Ruiz as Dorsch fouls that off for an 0-2 count. Harvey with the delivery. Dorsch reaching, gets it, but that ball is going to take a hop past Angelo. And... Cougars get a runner on base. Brings up Julio Cahigas to the plate. The left fielder, number 21, Julio Cahigas. So one runner on base now, Cahigas at the plate. Cahigas fouls that one back for an 0 1 count. Patton going to take a walk out to talk to his pitcher for a quick second, settle things down a bit. Cahigas. Had that monster go-ahead home run in his last at-bat. Just looking to get things going for the Cougars here. No outs, a runner already on base. As that one is outside for ball one. Up 
on the season. Sam Harvey, a 2.89 ERA, made eight appearances for the Spartans as Kahigas swings through that one. Harvey only given up six runs in his eight appearances. So a solid choice for the Spartans to put in in this instance as he checks on Dorsch back at first. Dorsch, another one of those guys that's going to be aggressive on the base paths, especially in a situation like this. You've got no outs, so you don't need to be too aggressive. You can let the hitters do their things and try to advance that way, but Dorsch is not someone who shies away from, from being aggressive and as we've seen Harvey make two consecutive looks, look back at first, Dorsch is going to kind of play into that a little bit here as Dorsch takes off running. The throw, a well-placed throw, gets Dorsch out. A fantastic placed throw from Patton. Gets Dorsch, catches Dorsch stealing, and Cougars one out now. No runners on base. So Cahigas connects with that one, sends it. Oh, a bobble there from Bermeo is going to safely allow Cahigas to get to the plate and bring up Brandon Mahler. So a little bit of luck there for Cahigas after that bobble from Bermeo. Gets him on base. But Cougars now one out, one runner on base. Mahler at the plate as that one hits for strike one. Mahler 0 for 2 today. As he looks at ball one. Still chasing his first hit today, but Mahler has been a pretty consistent hitter for this Cougar squad, obviously hitting in the four spot. As he sends that one out into left, and it's going to drop a base hit for Mahler, moving the runners around, and the, runner, the Cougars have a runner in scoring position as Tyler Crater makes his way to the plates. So after... Dorsch was caught stealing. The Cougars starting to recover from that, and two runners on base, one out is a great spot for them to be in here as that ball misses outside for ball one. Crater also 0 for 2 at the plate today. Looking to get his first hit in this do or die time here as that one is in there for strike one. Crater, a 264 hitter for this Cougar squad. Swings at that one, sends it foul. Bounces off of our chapel building. So a one-two count now, one out, runners on a first and second. The delivery outside for ball two. If you're just now joining us here on the Cougar Sports Network, you've missed an exciting game so far. The Cougars struck first with a solo home run from Cahigas, as that one is in there for strike three. Harvey catches him looking, and quickly the Cougars now facing two outs. Michael Kasich at the plate now. First baseman number 10, Michael Kasich. Kasich falling into that similar slump as the last two batters we've seen. 0 for 2 on the day, looking to get things going here. As he looks at that one for strike one, thought about it for a second, but didn't proceed to swing. 
We're here in the bottom of the sixth inning of a seven-inning game. All tied up is that one just foul. So Kasich now looking at an 0-2 count. Two outs, runners on first and second. A tie ball game that the Cougars are looking to break open here. Cougar faithful starting to get a little loud in the stands. As Harvey delivers. And Kasich keeping himself alive since that one foul as well. Harvey looking to get the Spartans out of this inning without giving up another run and giving the Cougars this lead. As he uh, delivers this one, Kasich doing a great job at connecting no matter what to keep himself in this at-bat, being aggressive. So still looking at an 0-2 count now. For the fourth consecutive foul, Kasich is keeping himself fighting. Not ready to give up here yet. Kasich, one of those guys that we've seen do some great things for the Cougar squad. I mentioned earlier in the broadcast that a couple games ago he had a fairy tale walk off home run to give the Cougars the win over Dominican. So, not something that he shies away from is staying consistent as he sends another one foul. Currently looking at five consecutive foul balls. Curious what the uh, the record would be for most foul balls in an at-bat, but I'm sure five is uh, probably somewhere in the top ten. As that one inside for ball one. So the attempt for the record for most consecutive foul balls in an at-bat is officially broken here. One, two count now, two outs, runners on first and second. Harvey, the delivery, sends that ball right into the Spartans' dugout. I believe everybody got out of the way. A scary sight to see that. It appears as though everybody is okay. So a one, two count now. As that ball sails foul once again right off of the uh, Chapel of Our Lord building. So in the MLB, the record for most pitches in an at-bat is actually 21. With 16 total foul balls. That's the, the MLB record right there. Kasich sitting at eight foul balls, so about halfway there to, to break the MLB record. Kasich really making Harvey work for this here, not giving anything up and making him continue to pitch to him as he sends that one over to first, a sliding grab from Angelo. Gets the out and gets the Spartans out of that little bit of a jam there, so... Spartans able to tie things up in the sixth inning. inning. Cougars unable to answer, but we're still looking at a tie game as we head to the top of the seventh, the final scheduled inning of today's game. Cougars going to see a new arm coming out onto the mound, so don't go anywhere as we are hitting the nail biter of the game here on the Cougar Sports Network.
Back here on the Cougar Sports Network. Top of the seventh inning, Cougars have a new pitcher. Number 32, left-handed pitcher Anthony Polano. Looking at some final stats for Dylan Scott. Pitched six innings for the Cougars. Gave up one run on five hits. Six strikeouts, 23 batters faced, and 72 total pitches. Overall, a really, really good outing for the uh, freshman pitcher for the Cougars. Spartans looking to break things open here. At the plate now for the Spartans, Dominic Curcio. Curcio 0 for 2 on the day, looking to get his first hit in a do or die time for the Spartans. Looks at ball one. That one high for ball two. Polano gets that one in there for strike one. Anthony Polano been a top reliever for this Cougar squad. A 250 ERA. He's made 13 appearances so far as he sends that one in there for strike two. In his 13 appearances, he secured a 1-0 win record, 18 innings pitched. As he catches Curcio swinging, sends that one foul. So a 2-2 count now. Polano, the delivery, misses for ball three. Cougar fans thought that was strike three. That one a little bit wild for ball four. So the Spartans get a runner on base. Patton at the plate for the Spartans. Catcher number seven, Tyler Patton. Patton 0 for 2 today. Struck out in his first appearance. Flew out to left field in his second. Looking to at least get a hit here. Maybe move Curcio around. As that one misses for ball one. You can expect the Spartans to be a little bit aggressive here in this inning. Really their last chance in the schedule of the game to take the lead here. As that one is fouled back for a 1-1 count now. Curcio. One for one on stolen bases this season. Not a huge threat to the Cougars, but we've seen some uh, some interesting things happen on the bases today. So can't rule him out too much as Polano misses for ball two. So a 2-1 count now. No out runner on first. Polano with the delivery. Strike two. Little bit of a different pitcher here for the Spartans. Polano not only left-handed, but has a little bit of a different speed and velocity than Dylan Scott did. Spartans just starting to get comfortable with Scott and bringing in Polano as he checks Curcio back at first.
Two two count. That ball is hit deep into left center. Tracking it is Hickman, who does not make the catch. Bounces off of his glove. So we're going to see runners now on second and third. It's going to bring up. Rivera for the Spartans. Spartans sitting in a really, really good spot now. A base hit scores one, potentially two for Aurora. Anything hit into the outfield in the air, you're going to expect to see Curcio tag up. So Polano really trying to force ground balls here. As that one is in there for strike one. One, one count, no outs, runners on second and third. Polano trying to get out of this, sends it in there for strike two. That ball is chopped over to first. Kasich checking the runner and gets the out at first. A great job from Michael Kasich. Not immediately turning his back to Curcio over on third, but instead keeping an eye on him so that he has no time to go anywhere. Gets the out at first. Keeps the runners where they're at. And we're going to see a pinch hitter now for the Spartans. In number four, Brendan Naylor, the junior out of Lake Zurich, Illinois. So one out now, runners on second and third. Number four, Brendan Naylor. If you're head pitching coach, Matt Smith, you're really happy with the outcome of that last at bat. Get seeing your pitcher force a ground ball there, not only a ground ball, but a ground ball that's going to hold the runners exactly where they're at. That's what you're looking to do here as Naylor takes strike one. That ball... Wide for ball one. One one count now, one out. Runners on second and third. Polano with the delivery. That ball chopped foul. Seems as though that Spartans dugout is a little bit of a magnet. Balls keep pulling to the left side a little bit. So a 1-2 count now. Polano trying to limit the damage here. As this ball misses for ball three. So game one of today's doubleheader, a scheduled seven-inning game. But if this game goes into extra innings, whether it be one, whether it be five, whether it be ten, that means that game two of the doubleheader will automatically become a seven-inning game. As that ball popped high into the infield, Mahler catches it, keeps runners exactly where they're at, and now we're seeing two away. That's going to bring up the top of the order here. Bermeo at the plate, up, trying two, to keep this at Bermeo. this inning alive for the Spartans. Bermeo chasing his first hit of the day, seen two strikeouts, popped a ball up in the first inning to Jake Mahler. 
As he swings at that one, it's high into the air. Mahler chasing it. Dorsch coming in to call everybody off and instead diving does not make the catch. So two, two runners are going to score on that. And the Spartans take the lead. So the Spartans taking the three to one lead off of that. Jack Fielder, number 26, Joe Lukanskis. So Lukansik now at the plate for the Spartans. That one misses four ball one. Two outs here in the top of the seventh. Spartans officially taking the lead for the first time of today's game. Is that one in there for strike one? Solano with the delivery outside for ball two. Spartans today. So far, they've been two for eight when you've got when they've got runners in scoring position, and one for six with two outs. So combining those odds, as that ball is hit fair, foul. Excuse me, hit foul. So that's going to be a two-two count now. So a two-two count now. Two outs here. As I was saying, so. Spartans two for eight with runners in scoring position one for six with two outs here we've got runner in scoring position and two outs so Spartans odds aren't on their side for this statistic but anything is possible in the game of baseball as Polano gets set here with the two out as he steps off to check for Mayo So two's all around, runner on second even. Needing to get out of this inning, Anthony Polano. The delivery. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Polano gets the Cougars out of this inning. But the Spartans do some damage first. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Cougars in a do or die situation. Need to put two up to stay alive. Three to win. Don't go anywhere here on the Cougar Sports Network. No, I'm Connor. Wait, I'm Connor. Do you know where I can find more about Concordia Chicago? Yeah, head to cuchicago.edu to find out more. We appreciate you guys tuning in to our game today. Hope to see you soon. Go Cougs! Hi, Mom!
back on the Cougar Sports Network. Jake Mahler at the plate for the Cougars. Cougars needing to put a couple runs on the board to stay alive. Trailing 3-1 here in the bottom of the seventh. Again, today's game, game one, is scheduled as a seven-inning game. So needing to put a couple runs up as he takes ball one. So a one-two count now. Connects with that, drops it into right center, and is going to hold at first. So we're going to see a new hitter for the Cougars, number 72, Connor Jerkatis. Jerkatis making his first appearance of the day for the Cougars, taking the place of designated hitter. Caleb Anderson. Jerkatis on the season. Still chasing his first hit. has made four appearances for the Cougars. Unable to put a hit up in any of those appearances as he looks at ball one. Harvey still working on the mound for the Spartans. Looking to close this one out. A one-two count with no outs here. Looks at strike three. Boswell coming up to the plate for the Cougars. One out now, runner on first. First stop, number 18, Deshaun Boswell. Harvey picked up his second strike out of the day right there. Only seven batters faced so far. Two of them picking up the strikeouts on. As that one's in there for strike one. That one catches the inside corner. Strike two. Boswell quickly with an 0-2 count now. Boswell, one for two on the day. Fouls that one off. Keeps himself alive here. Spartans looking to end this game here. Two more outs and they take the win for game one, Harvey sends that one. Boswell connects with it, sends it over. Can they turn the double play? No. So Boswell's gonna reach on the fielder's choice. Mahler's gonna be out at second. And two outs now. Back to the top of the order for the Cougars. Eli Hickman at the plate. In the do or die moment. So Hickman, the tying run at the plate. As he looks at strike one. Connects with that, pops it high and to the left. Naylor chasing it and grabs the out and the Cougars are going to fall to 
the Spartans in game one of today's doubleheader. A heartbreaking finish here after the Cougars were successfully able to hold the lead the majority of the game, giving up two runs in the top of the seventh that would be used against them here as Cougars fall three and one, three to one against the Spartans. Game two of today's doubleheader, a scheduled nine inning game will be coming up in about 30 minutes. So don't go anywhere on the Cougar Sports Network as more baseball is headed your way here shortly. Thank you for joining me for game one. I'm Kayla McLeod, accompanied by Sydney Pulaski's Laher. We'll be back for game two in about 30 minutes here on the Cougar Sports Network. <laughs> 